and welcome to the most wanted on the edge. Well, it's certainly starting to look that way and between odiums and thugs. And now we have this, the Wee Knives miscreant. Ah, and what is a miscreant? A miscreant is someone who has done something unlawful. Um, so there it is. Um, and knife that has been out for quite a while. This being the original miscreant, uh, not the 3.0, the shorty version of the knife. But a Brad Zinker knife, uh, Brad Zinker design, I should say, as you probably do know. So a little bit about uh, Brad Zinker. Held out of Florida, USA, and apparently made his first knife, or started making his first uh, knife around 1984. Spent about one and a half years on that before he had a knife, in his words, that could cut. <laughs> That's about it. Um, obviously honed the craft over time, was accepted into the Knife Makers Guild um, in 1998 and apparently for about 12 years made uh, fixed blade knives uh, before easing into folders um, and now focuses on flipper knives um, and focuses on, well, or likes to design knives that are slim and lightweight folders and that uh, this knife certainly falls into that category. Seems like a uh, a family orientated guy, relocated to be uh, closer to his grandchildren. Uh, and uh, after about 32 years of making knives in his spare time, uh, then moved into uh, producing and designing knives full time. So there we go, a little bit about Brad. Right, guys, now I'm going to be doing the usual go through materials, dimensions, and weight, and then we will dive into design and attributes of this good looking knife that is uh, seriously growing on me. Uh, right, so we have Blade. S35VN, not unusual for a wee knife. In fact, all the specs are pretty much the same as most wee knives. Handle and all hardware on the knife is titanium, so the handle, the clip, the screws, the pivot cap, the backspace are all titanium. And then we have a pivot assembly that is ceramic ball bearings. Right, uh, let's get cracking on dimensions and weight. We've got blade length of 101.6 millimeters, and that's 4 inches. Blade thickness of 3.2 millimeters, and that's uh, 0.13 inches. We have a handle thickness that is 9.4 millimeters, and that's 0.37 inches. Close length of the knife 122.2 millimeters 4.81 inches overall length of the knife is 223.8 millimeters and that's 8.81 inches and then weight of the knife and once again I do have Wii's stated weights but as I always do we'll check that against um, my scale I mentioned this before that uh, the weights that I get on this scale are normally pretty much bang on with uh, Wii's stated weights what are we on we're on grams let's have a look see here so I get 70, 77, so slightly off. Let's just relocate that on there. Okay, so 70, 77 grams, they've got 78.2. A little bit of a difference there. Oh, interesting. Maybe my scale is losing its accuracy. And yeah, they got 2.76 ounces, I get 2.7. No, oh, okay, so well, close enough. Right, uh, now. Let's start by having an overall look at the shape of the knife. I know I normally dive into blade shape, but the overall long, slim, slender um, knife does remind me, and I know it's not, uh, but it does remind me a little bit of a balisson, the look of the knife. And I guess it's just that overall slenderness and the holes in the handle that just is a little bit reminiscent of that. And again, I know it's not a balisong knife. But to me it's kind of like having the a little bit of the look of a balisong knife, the benefits of the balisong knife without you know having to like wave your hands around like a crazy fool. <laughs> you take this knife, you want to de de deploy it, flipper, there we go. Clean and simple. <laughs> More up my alley. Right, there it is. Um, so let's look at that blade, blade shape. So we have a drop point blade, very subtle drop point blade, relatively deepish belly to that and um, we'll ignore the fingerprints all over this. In fact, maybe I'm just going to give it a little bit of a wipe down. Uh, <laughs> hands <clears throat> on this knife quite a lot. There we go. That looks a little bit better. So, um, drop point, the deepish belly. Biggish sharpening come forward finger choil and I'll get that in my hands a little bit later so you can see that and then from that finger choil we've got this angled straight plunge line that goes up that separates the flat grind on the blade from the ricasso at the back and then the finish on this blade is a satin finish but a satin finish that has a little bit of a 
roughness, not a roughness from bad manufacture, roughness by design. It's not that sort of very even type satin finish, but it is nevertheless very attractive and very well done. Uh, and speaking about neat things, the uh, edge on this blade uh, per Wii's normal, uh, normal high standard, and that's what I wanted to get out there, is uh, uniform and tidy and sharp out of the box right let's look a little bit about the a little bit at the spine of the blade so we've got this very long ricasso that runs uh, if we turn it like that runs from about the area of the jumping all the way to that point on the blade so a very long ricasso but the way that's done you can see the little angle cut back into the blade and then that moves forward tapers to the front and almost creates like a uh, is it a spear or maybe a double-edged sword type shape, but um, very, very attractively done. And the way that that starts on that side with the angle coming down that way and then seemingly going up because of the jumping um, the other direction, it creates that, that very balanced, symmetric shape to that, uh, to that swedge. Right, looking at the spine of the blade, so we've got the jimping, I mentioned that there, and then it tapers down to where that swedge is, a little short little taper, and then that runs all the way forward to about that point before the blade finally tapers off to the point. So quite a slicey and stabby style blade, this. Uh, right, let's have a look at that <clears throat> flipper tab. So the flipper tab, to me, to my eye, and I'm going to hold it like that, has a little bit of a fan shape to it, and you can, I think you can see what I mean. We've got that straight line running up, and then it's curved around the jumping, and then the other straight line is created by the handle itself. So it's, I'm talking about one of those, <clears throat> those old style, you know, the, the Japanese style fans that you flip open with one hand. Um, there we go. So that's what it sort of reminds me of. Right, I think I've covered off everything on the blade. No, maybe not. Let's just have a look there. So we've got just forward of the Ricasso, we've got the designer's mark. So there we have the BZ Brad Zinker design. Also very neatly edged onto that blade. Right, let's have a look at this handle. And this handle to me is a little slice of loveliness. It really has a little bit of a monolithic or like a gold bar type shape to it. And by the way, the color on this specific example is champagne. You also get it in black. And both versions do have the gold accents, the anodized gold accents on it. But gorgeously finished, and it does look good, this, that sort of simplicity of the overall profile. So we've got a beveled edge, quite a big beveled edge, running all the way around the handle, and that's very tidily done. And then the actual corners on the blade side of the handle, the corners are also beveled, giving you that kind of gold bar look about um, the handle. The finish, I mentioned champagne, and it's got a slightly roughish finish to it. It, it looks sort of like a bead-blasted finish to that. And then we've got those beautifully done holes that are drilled, machined into the handle and those on that tapered edge as they go down, that's where the gold anodizing happens there and gives you such a beautiful pop of color. And then all the, X, the other hardware, I should say, that's also been gold anodized. So the screws and the pivot cap and the pivot cap itself, if I get that at an angle and get the, the uh, camera to focus on that you'll see has these concentric circles machined into it and that is also just so beautifully done um right uh, so what else i uh, just speak about that shape so this is one of those fidget type knives but not fidget because of the action it's just when you get this knife in hand like that it really it does feel good. You kind of want to handle it. You don't want to put it down and fondle the knife, but it's while it's closed, it just has that solid, oh, nice feel about it. It's this like little bar that's in your hand. Um, does really feel good. And it does kind of remind me, and maybe it's the petrol head in me that's coming out here, but it reminds me of one bank um, of a V10, well, being the five holes, um, of a V10 engine. Uh, you know, if you look at it like that, that you know, there's the, there's the five pots. Um, so you imagine that on that side, and then the other one on the other side. And I think those extra little holes that have been drilled in, um, helps to create that effect. Certainly in my mind, that's what it looks like. So there's this kind of industrial mechanical chic to the knife that really, to me, is incredibly, incredibly attractive. The frame then pulls back to expose that backspacer, and in there we have that sort of rounded corner 
type of rectangular shape for your lanyard attachment. But all of those sort of finishes, all of them have a little bit of a beveled edge, even those little holes there have a little beveled edge to them. Incredibly, incredibly tidily done. Uh, you know, the manufacturer, I've spoken about this before, we, you cannot fault the fit and finish on a Wii knife. They are uh, they just are masters um, in fit and finish on production knives. And this, no exception. It is absolutely beautifully, beautifully done. Right, what else do I need to cover off um, from a design perspective? Yes, the pocket clip. Um, well, uh, I suppose des design and the practicality of the knife. Pocket clip. Tip up carry. And you can see that very thin pen style pocket clip in its shape from the top but also if you look at it from the side it's the sort of pocket clip that you would find on a pen uh, and you can see how that's been mounted there so it's not particularly deep carry you picture that in your pocket you're going to see the pocket clip and a little bit of the knife sticking out um, of your pocket as well but it is reversible and that really done neatly as well so you can see only a single screw uh, torque screws by the way on this so if you want to get into the knife easy enough but a single torque screw holding it on that side but when you turn it around you can see what prevents it from moving around the pocket clip and um, that beautifully machined little pocket for the pocket clip um, so that also very very tidily done all in all the design well integrated uh, well considered the little details we've got those little diagonal cuts in the pocket clip as well just superbly superbly made designed knife this it really is and, and as I said the more I've got it in my hand the <laughs> I actually want it. We've got the typical Wii logo on the, the pivot cap on that side and then that pivot cap and screw on that side I spoke about with those concentric circles in that. The anodizing by the way, so gold, they do call this um, gold, it looks bronze in some lights and I hope my camera is actually picking up. So we've got that gold anodizing in the holes on the show side, um, but not on the lock side, which I think is a bit of a pity, but that's again, no, not again, well that is subjective, that's the way I look at it. You might like the fact that it's only on the show side, it does give meaning to the description of show side, I guess, uh, more meaning, um, but not doesn't have those um, those little gold accents on the holes on the lock side. But nevertheless, this also very tidily done. So you can see that cut for the lock running into the frame on this side um, and the way that that curves around the pivot cap. Um, and there's your little screw for your stainless steel insert. So we've got the stainless steel on stainless steel lockup and we have the little over travel stop in there as well. But that cut that curves around the pivot and then perfectly cuts, intersects uh, those drilled holes and, and perfectly cuts them in, in half. Very, very, I'm going to say this, how many varies can I use? But it is just so tidy, this knife. Um, and, you know, as I said, that monolithic look about it and the way it feels in your hand. Gorgeous, gorgeous knife. And I am partial to a knife that has you know, bronze or gold accents on it. And, and I'll show you what I mean. I've brought a couple out here. So, I've got this, a knife that, it is a CRKT, but it's one of those CRKTs I recently got in my hands. It's been out for a while and just, well, it just feels so good. I actually just had to have it. So, um, it is, uh, you know, we've got the charcoal or gray with the bronze. They describe it accents on that. So, you know, that has that kind of bronze and black look about it. And then the other one is this, the, uh, what is this? The Fox Suru. And it's the same thing. You can see the little bronze accents on that. And on this side, it's the, the gray finish with the bronze accents there as well a little bit of bronze on the pocket clip as well so that does attract me and and here as well the Wii array so this with also charcoal almost black in this particular case but also has the bronze accents uh, on the knife that um, yeah <laughs> let me say it again I do find that attractive so I mentioned that this is the champagne version so you get a black handled version as well but also has the bronze in exactly the same places or gold sorry they describe this as gold we that is describe this as gold but it has those gold accents as well um, what else do I need to speak about on the design of the knife? Probably covered off um, most things on it. Um, action on the knife. <clears throat> the knife is running on those ceramic ball bearings and, uh, you know, it is buttery, buttery smooth. No scraping, no grittiness at all on this. And I'll keep quiet so you can hear that. It 
flies out, that blade does, and nice detent on it as well. So when I close that, I'm also going to keep quiet so you can hear the little ting and as it sucks that blade in. Oh, that is nice. Beautifully, beautifully done we once again. Um, so, <laughs> superb. The lock as well, in, in keeping with the overall shape of the the handle we've got this little cutback which uh, just helps you to get at that little lock but you can see how that's been beveled and uh very tidily done sort of reflects the shape of the handle overall and it it for me feels slightly better and more comfortable so that's the usual way that you would unlock it but for me on this specific knife it's one of those that feels better to me and easier for me to use the index finger to unlock that that way um and then on that blade, it is kind of drop shutty, so get it sort of into that position and give a little thumb flick and it will uh, close. But as I say, just buttery, buttery smooth. Right, um, let me just have a quick look at the notes here because I get the sense that um, once again, I have probably um, forgotten to mention something. <laughs> I always do it, and, and I've mentioned this before, I always realize it after I have finished um, the review, uh, <laughs> that I've left something off. But let me pause at this point and do something that I might forget, and that is to give my gratitude once again to Blades and Triggers, another knife that um, they've supplied to me um, to have a look over for a few days and do the review. Really do appreciate their support of the channel, and I think they do this because they know when they give me knives like this that um, I'm inevitably going to end up buying the knife. So it's just, I think, a selling point <laughs> for them. But check this knife and other Wii products and other brands of knives and other I mentioned before tactical goodies on their website BNT online um, right so what does that leave me to do um, I suppose just size comparison so let me get the knife uh, out there without destroying my uh, backdrop <laughs> get the knife back open <clears throat> and I'm going to bring in that Wii array again because whenever I do have a long slender knife I do bring out the Wii Array because I always mention that this is a very long knife but you can see in this particular instance the Wii Miscreant is even longer. Uh, right so there it is those two and then the usual ones that I do use so here we go the Spyderco Manix 2. Let's get that out to give you a sense of that as well. Right um, and then we've got the Medford Slim Midi so uh, again the miscreant longer i wonder from a thickness perspective it might be pretty yeah i think the slim midi might be a little bit thicker and a thicker blade stock on that right um and what else do i normally use right that i have been using of late is this because it is a knife i think a lot of people do know and that is the spyderco pm3 the smaller version Right, give you that perspective, and uh, and then this one, and I can't resist saying it because I always do say it that I use this knife because it's been out for so long, and most people will know the knife and might even own it, and that is the Benchmade Mini Barrage. Give you some perspective there. Right, guys, and I think that pretty much is it. And just looking at the knife now, I'm looking at the little camera screen to see the view that you would see, and the knife kind of has, and as I'm looking at it on that smaller screen, has that, I don't know what you call it, the sort of shorter, you know, you've got the, uh, the Japanese swords, you get the various lengths, and then you get the one that's the, the knife type, is it the Kazashi or something like that? I'm not actually sure, but I think you know what I mean. But it sort of has that shape to my eye anyway. Um, right, anyway, there it is. So, summary on the knife, another absolutely gorgeous product. Um, and uh, I suppose the only one downside if you're going to EDC a knife like that is all those holes on it. You're going to get a lot of pocket fluff and dust and muck and all that sort of thing in the knife, so you might need to clean it more than uh, a sort of more closed designed knife. But, um, but still a, a gorgeous uh, product to have in your pocket and whip out when you need it. So, um, and the, the thinness of the knife, <laughs> That's a word. Certainly will make it very pocketable if you can pocket something this long and if legislation in your area allows it. Certainly a nice piece to pull out and just have a look at every now and again as you're using it and admire the knife. And again, it is that sort of squared off, slightly monolithic. Well, it is just 
a slab of loveliness, this knife. I think that's a good description of it. It is a slab of loveliness. Beautiful, beautiful knife. I would love, I haven't yet, so I'd love to get the, uh, the shorter version of it, the Miscreant uh, 3.0. I'd love to get that in my hands. That might make more sense as a sort of general EDC knife, but um, you probably actually want both in your collection. <laughs> It is a gorgeous knife. And there it is. Uh, it is, um, hmm, do I need to make space for it in the collection? Um, I wonder. Um, time to break out the piggy bank. <laughs> so, there it all broke open, the piggy bank. There it is, guys. I guess all that's really left for me to do is to, once again, thank you for joining me. I really do appreciate it when you do, and I would equally appreciate it if you would hit that subscribe button if you haven't yet, and the bell icon so that you can be notified every time I release a new video, because, as I always do say, I really would love you to join me more often. And other than that, you go well, and God bless.